Good day, everyone. I am Chini Te. And I am Rod Mark Flandes. Today, we will discuss about phonology. phonology and its subtopics, the distinctive feature theory, and the intonation. So, let's start. So, according to Andrew Moore 2001, phonology is a study of sound system of languages. It is also concerned with anatomy and physiology, the organs of speech, and how we learn to use them. Let's have a quick discussion about the difference of phonetics and phonology. In phonetics, what are the sounds? How are they made in a vocal tract? While in phonology, how do sounds combine? How do they affect each other? In phonetics, it deals with the physical properties of the elements of the sound system, while in phonology, it deals with the sound system of languages. I want you to read the following. We have, can you read this one? Kibitz. Come again. Kibitz. Good. How about this one? Nincompoop. Very good. This one? Czar. Good. How about this one? Er, uh, no, sir. I can't read that one. Okay. Let's proceed to number five. Including that one, sir. I can't read it. Okay. How about this one? Kaput. Good. No, sir. No? Okay, let's proceed to the last word. Thingamajin. Come again? Thingamajin. Very well. What do you think is the reason why some words are not readable? Because of our knowledge of phonology, which means combination of sound. There are sounds that when you combine, they don't make any sense. And why some words are readable? Hmm... It is because of our knowledge and phonological rules in language helps us to identify which sound sequences might be a word in our language. Our language helps us pronounce words we never heard before. We know how to apply rules to words we never heard before. Now, let's proceed to distinctive feature theory. When we describe speech sounds, we use terms like place, manner, voicing, tongue height, lip rounding, and tenseness. We have these two symbols, the plus and the minus. Okay, this symbol means presence of the particular phonological feature, while this symbol means absence of the particular phonological feature. Two phones are different phonemes if at least one of their features is different. As you can see in the picture, we have P and B. P is equal to plus continental plus top minus voice. B is equal to plus continental plus top plus voice. So based on my example, what have you observed? The P sound is voiceless while the B sound is is voiced. Good. A sound is voiced 
if the vocal cords vibrate. Whereas a sound is voiceless if the vocal cords are not vibrating upon the production of sounds. Now let's proceed to the place of articulation. In the picture, we have alveolar, or tip of the tongue in the alveolar reach. Second is bilabial, or two lips touching each other. Then we have labiodental, or lower lip, touches the upper teeth. Next, dental, or tip of the tongue in the inner edge of the upper teeth. Next, we have palatal, or the tongue and hard palate. Next is velar, dorsal tongue and soft palate. And the last one is glottal, throat passage. Once again, good day everyone. I will now continue the discussion of Sir Rod Mark of the distinctive features of phonology, manner of articulation in consonants. We have here nasal. Nasals refer to the production of sounds with a lowered volume in the mouth and allowing air to escape freely through the nose like hm and hm. Next is we have plosives or stops. These are consonant sounds produced by a momentary blocking of airflow and the sudden release of a blocked air. The following sounds are plosives or stops. B, T, D, K, and G. Fricatives. Fricatives are consonant sounds produced by forcing air through the narrow channel made by placing two articulators close together. The examples of fricative consonants are and z. Okay. The fourth one is we have liquid. Liquid is a consonant sound produced when the tongue is raised to the root of the mouth that the air flows or passes out of both sides of the tongue. So the example is the sound. Oh. Glides are sounds produced from constricting the vocal tract but not really obstructing it. Example is wah. The next one is fricate. Affricates are those that are formed by stopping the flow of air and then releasing it so that a friction sound is produced. For example, ch, ch. I have here the consonant chart. So sounds that are bold are voiced. Let's proceed to the vowel sounds. I have here the vowel triangle. Basically, it helps us to describe how we use the mouth to pronounce vowels. One of the most important parts here is the vowel height. So as you can see, we have here high, mid, and low. So that's the vowel height. Next is the vowel backness. We have front, central, and back. Lip rounding. Some vowels are pronounced with a round lips and some are in a flat lips. Next is vowel duration. Some words are longer than the other. Let's proceed to our next topic. But before that, I have here an activity. So this activity is entitled, Say Hello To. I want you to say hello to the following persons. Number one, say hello to a baby. Hello. Okay, that's very nice. How about this? A neighbor you don't like. Hello. Hello. Okay. And the last one, a friend you meet regularly. Hello. Hello, okay. Okay, sounds good. That will lead to our new topic, which is intonation. Intonation refers to the melody that every language manifests in speech. 
That's according to Muhammad Aslam, 2011. When the voice goes up and down as the speaker changes his thoughts or emotions, he is said to be producing a melody. In speech, this tone is called intonation. There, let us go now to the English intonation system. We have three intonation patterns. First one is the final intonation or the rising and falling intonation, also called as the 2-3-1 pattern. So this pattern is used in a declarative and imperative statements and information questions. Example is, Jenny dances gracefully. So that is the pattern, 2-3-1. Again, Jenny dances gracefully. Number two is the rising intonation or the 233 pattern. So the rising intonation or 233 pattern are used for questions that are answerable by yes or a no. Example is, are you scared? So the question, are you scared, is answerable by yes or no. The last one is the non-final intonation. So non-final intonation is a pattern within a sentence that includes rising intonation followed by a falling intonation in the same sentence. We use non-final intonation for unfinished thoughts and introductory words and phrases with a series of words and when expressing choices. Example, when I grow up, I want to be a nurse. Next is, actually, he is coming tonight. So those are the three English intonation systems. The next one is functions of intonation. I have listed here three functions of intonation. Number one, attitudinal function. So attitudinal function is used when we express our feelings attitudes and emotions. Ex example, anger, boredom, gratefulness, and so on. Grammatical function, when the listener is better able to recognize the grammar and structure of what is being said by using the information of the intonation. For example, for example, one is placement of boundaries between phrases, clauses, and sentences. Number two, the difference between questions and statements. So the last function is the discourse function. Intonation signals the listener what is to be taken as new information and what is already given. In conversation, it convey to the listener what kind of response is being expected from him. Those are the three functions of intonation. That brings us to the end of our presentation. Since you don't have the luxury of time to explain further, please refer to our reference list we have provided. Alternatively, you can also email us for further discussion. Thank you so much for listening. Have a good day.